Hi, my name is Shannon McCartney and I live in Michigan. I taught for 15 years in Michigan and actually have a unique background in special education, regular ed, and then I have a reading specialist and I do probably about 99% of what I'm doing in the area of math. I um, came across ESGI, which I wish I would have had it earlier in my career um, because constantly assessing kids and doing intervention, the prevention of early learning failure, we're always looking to find out, you know, kind of, I call it like peeling back the layers of the onion to find out where kids are. And I never will forget when I figured out about ESGI, I was actually presenting at a staff development for educators conference and a colleague of mine said, hey, you've got to check this out. These are all the things that you talk about with your skill checklist. And I think I was just completely amazed at the idea that I, you know, that teachers could save 400 hours of you know, assessing kids one-on-one. -on -one. And that's always been a problem that you want to get to kids early on. And I never could find a solution other than like sitting and I, you know, having a large file of all these different kids and going through them and then pulling out each one. The a funny story is I did something called a SWAT team. It's a school-wide assessment team that we created. And we tried to figure out in kindergarten, how could we get all these assessments done and come into the classroom. So the teacher wanted to be with us or we'd get the resource room teacher, maybe the speech and language teacher, really any parapro that could help us. And I remember creating stations that you know, one person would be doing the phonemic awareness. Then the kid would hop over to the person doing the letters and sounds. And what we were trying to do is get data into the kindergarten classroom, you know, before six weeks of instruction, we've already missed, you know, so you're trying to do this SWAT team approach, but the teacher wasn't really involved. It was all hand, hand data. So, I mean, in the idea, I thought it was this great system. Um, and so I think everything that I'd kind of thought of in my head that could be created when I heard about ESGI, it was like, oh my gosh, like somebody has done that. Somebody has made a solution for what has been a really large problem in, can help within that preventing early learning failure. So I think progress monitoring is huge. I think sometimes people say, well, let's just wait, you know, for the first half year of kindergarten to go by and then let's give kids a chance that maybe haven't been in a quality preschool. But the reality is, is that if we can get to kids earlier, meaning if we just left those kids early on in kindergarten and said, oh, let's just wait. Though I can predict that those same kids that we should have highlighted early on would be the same kids that are gonna be at risk or needing it. And so as kids are learning, especially before third grade, you have this early intervention window that is open with kids until their third grade year. At the end of their third grade year, that early intervention gap kind of, kind of closes, meaning that kid can make that year's growth in a year's time, but they can't make what's called catch up growth. And that's where ESGI comes in with the progress monitoring part of it, is that you know we're teaching these skills that are really the pivotal foundation for the skills. If you think of kind of a pyramid, whether it's with reading or with math, the kids have to have one skill to go on to the next skill. Uh, what happens oftentimes when we don't progress monitor well, we just keep cramming standards down kids' throats and we end up I call them like a like Swiss cheese. <laughs> By the time they get to third grade, whether you're talking about reading or math, you've not filled and progress monitored properly to make sure that the gaps that the kids have are filled. And that's how I feel like sometimes we create man-made at-risk kids from not doing progress monitoring. So I think it's an essential piece to progress monitor kids early on um, because we can sort of prevent early learning failure. So ESGI uh, with the assessments, I have so many unique um, assessments, I think partly because of my background, having the special education, general ed, the reading and the math. Um, and so one of the first books that I wrote was called Finger Fanatics. It's a fine motor development program. And so that assessment really is gonna look at kids more specifically in, I call them kind of all of our assessments for littles. You know, if we look at eye hand coordination, if we look at um, pencil grip and hand strength, all of those things that we don't talk about that kids are supposed to just come with from all the stuff they do at home, it's really important to really do an analysis of those. And so we have a really quick checklist for that, as well as gross motor skills. Can kids hop? Can they skip? Um, if kids can skip, they're going to have the readiness for math. If they have dynamic and static balance, they're going to have the readiness for reading. Um, some of the other assessments we have are our numeracy assessments. And I think those are among the uh, most important, partly because I do a ton of stuff in math. But, you know, one thing is to look at that idea of supertizing. And, you know, I kind of have a 10 frame in front of me and a kid might look 
and say, yeah, I know that's seven. And then as soon as the child sees it in a different modality, which is kind of on a counting buddy, or it might be able to see better on a rec and rec, where there's five and two, they go back to counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So although they can subitize and tell me the 10 frame, they maybe memorize the 10 frame. And so in our numeracy screener in ESGI, we can check to see if a child has what's called conservation to 10. So I have five fingers. I'm not gonna grow anymore. I hope I don't lose any, um, but it's still five, right? Um, and so I can see five this way, but if I see it in a different modality, I shouldn't go back to counting. And so instead of just looking at the 10 frame in particular, we can really dig a little bit deeper to see if the kid has something called conservation. The best part about it, sit next to the kid in two seconds. Our teachers doing the screener would have the 10 frame and then pull another 10 frame. Hold on, I gotta jot this down. And they're, you know, marking whether or not the kid has it or not. In ESGI, it's yes, no, yep, they have it. Two seconds to report prints out. What I love about it is there's flashcards that come out for a parent um, report. And if your kid, let's say, memorized the 10 frame, but they can't do 10 in a linear way, or maybe even in a scattered arrangement, the parent, the teacher, we already have that covered and we're looking at it, you know, on a developmental um, scale. So I have some assessments that are in the area of, of numeracy. I'm looking at kinesthetic one-to-one -one correspondence. And then a new part of what we've added into ESGI is a part of my special ed background with ADHD and sensory integration. You have kids that are all over the place. You know, I always joke that they're like licking each other, but I feel like that's a thing if you go into a pre-K K classroom this year. Um, but the idea that that you can get in there and look at the skills to find out, is it the child that's, it's, is it more like fidgetness? Is it more, is the child having more impulsivity? Is the child disorganized? You know, so it kind of takes the idea of peeling back the layers of the onion to find out what the function of their behavior is. And then in our ADHD stuff that we have, you know, you can find different interventions and things that really pinpoint the targeted area. So I would say that the assessments that I have in ESGI are really about that peeling back the layers to find the root of the problem, which really fits perfectly with what ESGI is doing because it's immediate, it's not delayed. I need to know right away with progress monitoring how kids are going, especially in the early years. I think ESGI in the fall is going to be your number one tool because of the fact that, let's be honest, if kids are in pre-K or if they're in kindergarten, um, a lot of, you know, obviously for first grade too, but in kindergarten and pre-K, they come with nothing, right? So even if you have kindergarten roundup, there's great ways. We do a lot of kindergarten roundup things just to get skills to kind of figure out what the skill set is of our kids coming in. If you can get with ESGI, honestly, you can buy instructional time. We usually say that no teaching is happening, you know, really for the first six weeks. I mean, I know you're working on culture and all those things in the classroom, but the amount of assessments in early childhood that we're asked to do, it is, it's astronomical as to how, who's losing, the child's losing because you're pulling kids one-to-one -one and, you know, having your big crate that you're pulling over with all the files in it, and then you're pulling out for Johnny to sit down and you're going through all of that. And so ESGI can hit the ground running because you can print a report within that first week, you know, as you're going through, you can take an iPad, you could be in the playhouse with your kids in pre-K or K and assessing their letters and sounds. And you don't need a SWAT team to come in because it's gonna be you know, that easy to be able to take the screener and hit it. If you can get the data early on, that's the most important part because we can start grouping our kids and we're not gonna wait for them to fail. We're gonna prevent them from failing because we're gonna know their skills inside and out. If you were a first grade teacher, you know, obviously if you have ESGI in your classroom, that data is just exported right up to first grade. So I mean, how, what a great gift that the kindergarten teacher really can't benefit from, but the first grade teacher can see, oh, let's look at the checklist of phonemic awareness or numeracy, or you know, maybe it's gross motor skills. And then you can hit the, round, the ground running because you're getting the data that is active data from the previous year from that child. And so right there, you're ready to go, which is a huge time saver and really you know, creates the communication, the data that we're looking for. Because we believe a lot of our kids need to make more than a year's growth in a year's time with how at risk many of the kids that are coming into our schools are.